Praise the Lord, everybody. Greetings to you on this afternoon. And welcome to our Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. We thank God for this time together. We thank God for you, you, and you joining us on this afternoon. And we're looking forward to the presence of God being with us in this time together yes. um, as we come together. So again, we thank you for joining. We ask that you would take time to just start a watch party. Um, this information is good, it's valuable, it's worth sharing. So start a watch party on tonight. We want people to join in and hear what the Lord has to say to us on yes. tonight. Yes. Amen. Well, before we get started, let's just have a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank and praise you for another opportunity to be together in your holy name. We thank you for this time of sharing out of your word. We pray that you would meet us in our homes, on our jobs, in our cars, or wherever we are viewing this Bible study tonight. I pray, God, that you would cause the teaching spirit to come upon us tonight, that those will have ears they may hear and receive what you will say unto us tonight. We thank you for your presence and your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. Praise God. And again, what a joy and a pleasure it is to be with you tonight for our Wednesday night word explosion. And God bless to all of free life. We love you and appreciate you so much. We were so happy again to be with you on Sunday for our park and praise, our church without walls, where you just drive in. And we had a powerful time in the Lord on Sunday. And then again, uh, we'll be there this Sunday outside. So please tell everybody, because yeah. we practice social distance. We have plenty of room so that you can drive, you can stay in your car, or bring your lawn chair, sit by your car, or stand outside your car. And I want to encourage you, if you come and you know the weather's going to be warm, bring you some things to help make your stay more comfortable for that hour or hour and 15 minutes that we'll be in service. So bring you some ice water if you want to bring you an umbrella for shade or maybe even you want to might you might want to bring a little pop-up. You feel free to do that. But just make sure everything is set up before 10 a.m. because at 10 a.m. we're going live into our worship service and I'm expecting God to show up as he always does every Sunday morning. Amen. So we certainly do appreciate all of you and those who are sharing with us. And you may not be a member of Free Life Temple Christian Center, but you're watching us tonight. I want you to know that we don't take that for granted. We do appreciate you who watch us, who have sown a seed into this ministry to help continue, help us to continue to do the work of the Lord. So we do appreciate you. And we want to give you a great big shout out tonight and say thank you for supporting Free Life Temple Christian Center and to all of the saints of the Lord who are our members of our church. Thank you so much for your support. And we're looking forward to seeing you this Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And uh, I'll tell you something else about that at the end of the service so that you can be prepared for this Sunday morning. Amen. And so tonight, again, I'm so happy to be with First Lady. Amen. Amen. And uh, to be able to come share some word with you tonight. And uh, I want to give a great, great big shout out to, to Amber Jones. She's our daughter. You can't see her. She's in the background, but she's so helpful. And we do appreciate all that she does. We run around sometimes and give her looks and points and everything. Uh, but she takes it like a real soldier. And uh, she takes care of the business. So I want to give a shout out to Amber. And for those of you who can, just give some claps and appreciation for Amber. Because I'm thankful for good help. Amen. Praise God. So tonight, I want you to get your Bibles. We're going back to where we left off on last Wednesday. We're going, we're going to 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. And uh, First Lady, she's going to read verses 4 through 8. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, 4 through 8. And we're going, this will be part two of our lesson from last week. And we gave you some things on last week. And tonight, we're going to just give you a few more things. But before we get to that, just by way of review, we're going to share a few of those things after First Lady reads from 1 Corinthians chapter number 13, verses 4 through 8. So help type that in tonight. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verses 4 through 8. Amen. Go ahead, First Lady. Amen. Um, 
1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Yes. Charity suffers long and is kind. Charity envies not. Charity divulgeth not itself. It is not puffed up. Does not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things. Believeth all things. Hopes all things. Hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. Praise God. And so on last week, we were talking from the subject, bringing hearts together. And it'll be on the screen so that you can see that. Bringing hearts together. And we dealt with that on last week and in and, and terms of understanding because of the quarantine, because of the pandemic, uh, and because of the time that we're in now, it has caused us to sometimes spend more time with each other than we have normally been spending time with, with each other uh, because uh, you have now had to, some people have had to work from home, some people have been laid off from work, and you've been at home spending more time. And for those who are, perhaps you are not married or you don't have a family, you're a single individual, you perhaps maybe you've been spending more time by yourself binging on Netflix or Hulu or something to that degree. You may have just been studying the Word of God and in prayer. Amen. Uh, but as a result, you've spent some time by yourselves or time uh, that has been more than normal with each other. And as a result of that, uh, we understand that uh, there could be some things that have come out of those uh, extra moments together that may have caused perhaps some friction or some con contention or some conflict or perhaps even in your relationship, maybe husband and wife, that you have discovered that there has been or there is some issue there uh, that has arisen uh, because you've been spending so much more time together that maybe you didn't even realize how far you two have drifted apart from each other because you've been so busy doing other things and by the time you get home, you just probably want to have dinner and go to bed or something to that degree. And so what we were sharing with you as it relates to love, because we call the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the love chapter, and, and it deals with a lot about what love does, what it does not do, what it is, uh, how it's not provoked, how it loves unconditionally, and, uh, and how that love, it, it becomes the glue that binds our relationships together. Because love, and First Lady said it on last week, love is so strong and so powerful that even death can't really stop love from functioning. Because even though people may die in our lives that we love, death doesn't cause us to stop loving those people. We still continue to love those persons even after death has taken them because death is so powerful and so strong and as we are relating to one another that we will notice that that in, in most of these uh, perhaps relationships that that may be between husbands and wives and we're going to do a little bit more with that is that if there are already vulnerabilities in those relationships uh, a lot of these things may be more likely to be revealed uh, as more things add stress to that relationship because I believe that this has been a time that every relationship has been tested uh, in some form or fashion. Uh, even your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that it has been tested in some way, form, or fashion in terms of your faith still believing in him, even when things perhaps may not have always at the moment seem to have worked out for your good. Or perhaps maybe some some, some other thing has, obstacle have came up in our lives that have tried our faith or tried our relationship with God that tried to even put doubt in our heart about God, do you hear me? And Lord, you know, where are you? And those types of Amen. things to that degree. But we understand it is that love that connects us and that binds us and that brings us together even when we have discovered that there have been some things that may have caused 
us to drift away from each right. other. Amen. Amen. You want to add something to that, Doc? No, just going into our review for um, last week that uh, it's important that we focus on our relationships, especially during these times. So if we have been kind of lax in, at times in our relationship and fine-tuning our relationships, now really is a time that we really want to pay careful attention to our relationships. And so this is, is vitally important to the health and the uh, furtherment of our relationships is that we actually focus on and take the time to really focus in on our relationships and be in tune to what's really happening in our relationships. Yeah, because you want to be intentional about your relationships because you want to maintain good relationships. You know, between you and maybe you have a best friend or maybe you and your husband or, or maybe between you and your children. Right. You want to make you want to be intentional about maintaining those relationships and don't allow Corona to cause a divorce in your home. Don't allow Corona to cause you to separate from friends. Perhaps you've had for years and maybe something small has come up that you easily could squash and let that go. Because the truth of the matter is, I know some people say, well, I don't like people and I'm good by myself. God didn't design us to be alone. Mm -hmm. Even when he created Adam and Adam was naming all the animals, God looked at him and said, look, man should not be alone. And so God put Adam to sleep. And while Adam was asleep out of Adam's rib, he creates one man out of his womb. He creates one man and says to Adam, this is a bone of thy bone, flesh of mm -hmm. thy flesh. He gives him a mate, somebody yes. compatible to be with him because no man is an island. Mm -hmm. It's that God didn't create you to be by yourself. Yeah. You can't be sustained by yourself. You need other relationships. You need other connections. Mm -hmm. And you, perhaps you need different relationships on different levels in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so we want to talk again about bringing those hearts together, particularly uh, uh, even in a, in a home where you are married right. and you've discovered that there has been some tension and there's been some confusion and you hate to come home and now you try to stay gone as long as you can mm -hmm. or whatever you can because you don't want to come home because you don't want to get into an argument. You don't like the environment. You've discovered that this has taken place. Well, we want to help you so that you can start bringing those hearts back together again. Restoring peace in your home, joy in your home, love in your home, and then finding out that, hey, this person can be my best friend. You know what I'm saying? That that's your new BFL. And so we want to talk about that. And so we, we were talking about some things, even as it relates to communication. And one thing I want to say go ahead, Dallas. Just before you go into that, um, what I thought about is as we're in this time of pandemic, we and we've been in since March. And so the one thing that we have to realize is that time is moving on and life is moving on and that we should um, be clear about this one point is that this too shall pass. Yeah. Now what it's going to look like after this, we don't know, but this too will pass. And so we can't afford in our relationships to stay, be lackadaisical, to sit back and not um, be, in, again, intentional about building our relationship because we're going to come out on the other side of this. And as we come out on the other side of this, we want healthy, yes. strong uh, relationships that can withstand the test of time. And so as we look at this time together and in looking at our relationships, it is an excellent time to build our relationship so that as we continue to go through this and come out on the other side of this, we have relationships that are um, substantial, that will sustain, yes. that will be rock solid. You know, we want to have those kind, those kind of relationships. So it's important that we take this time and not only just invest in our relationships, but invest even in our relationship with ourselves so that as we come out, we're better for the time that we've spent. And let me just add to that as well. If you had a good relationship and just by chance, you blew that and you messed that up or you did something that you were the offense, you should call that individual and just ask them to forgive you, apologize, and then continue on with that relationship. Don't allow something minor 
to mess up something major in your life or in your relationship. And so we're going to give you those three things that we gave you last week as it related to building a stronger marriage, building a stronger uh, relationship with uh, your friends, and particularly for you, that, you all that are husband and wife, we want you to pay real close attention to these. And so the first three that we gave you last week, these are just by way of review, and then we're going to give you the next three, and then we're going to be done for tonight. The first thing that we dealt with, we gave you last week was to unite your team. Now that's important, unite your team. It's on the screen there. Unite your team. Yes. And so that means you don't allow loss or uncertainty or to divide you as a married couple. Uh, you don't even allow the children to divide you as a team. You unite your team. If I say no, then she <laughs> says no. If I say yes, then she says yes because we are a united team. Even as it relates to what are we going to do now with the finances that we have coming into our home right now? That if I got a stimulus check uh, that I've gotten or perhaps I'm waiting on to see what's going to come out next, how are we going to manage this finance together that we unite our team together so that we are on the same page so that we can move forward together as a team? Because if you're going to be a husband and wife, you have to understand you are a team. It's no more, but that's, she's an individual and I'm an individual. Yeah, we are an indivi individuals, but we become a team. Mm -hmm. Then the word of God says, let the two become yes. one. Yes. And that's going to be some work. That's going to be a strain uh, to do that. But God will give us the grace so that the two can become one. And so you want to make sure that you unite your team. And as my wife said, you want to make sure that you understand that this is an opportunity for the both of you all to uh, unite against a common enemy. And then you both function as a powerful team. That's what you want to do. You want to come together and function as one, as a powerful team. So the first thing again is unite your team. First thing, second yeah. thing. So the second thing we have is trust the providence of God in your relationship. Trust the providence of God in your relationship. So we don't always, with providence, we don't we don't see with our natural eyes what God is doing and how he's orchestrating things behind the scenes, but we know that he is working it out for our good yes. and for his glory. Yes. So trusting the providence of God. Because one thing about God is he knows everything about every situation. He knows the motives of each individual. Yeah. He knows the makeup of each individual. He knows the heart of each individual. He knows the mindset of each individual. Yeah. And so when we trust, as we trust the providence of God in our relationship, we are trusting, we're trusting in a God who knows more than we know. So in that, we sit back and we don't always wish for our will to be done. Yeah. But we say, God, let your will be done in this relationship. Because I know that no matter what the outcome is, as we have committed this relationship to you, it's going to work out as it should be and it's going to be for God's glory. Amen. And the third thing we share with you is that to maintain a good, strong relationship or to help repair that relationship, mm -hmm. choose forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Choose forgiveness. You want to make sure that you do that. In other words, don't hold a grudge. Let it go. Type that in. Okay. Let it go. Let it go. And one thing about that choosing forgiveness real quick with that is, is that as we choose forgiveness, it's, it's better when we choose it almost immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's better yeah. when we choose it immediately because yeah. what you will find is that the longer you hold on to it, the longer it has time to uh, put roots or you can rehearse it and then you can add things to it and yeah. then the enemy can add stuff to it. So when we're quick to um, choose forgiveness, the quicker we are to overcome that. That's right, because you want to make sure as you choose forgiveness that you take that opportunity to opportunity to resolve the right. issue. Okay. Resolve the issue and don't be afraid to be the first one to step mm -hmm. up and apologize and to say, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I apologize. 
I was wrong. Mm -hmm. I didn't look at it the right way. Please forgive me. Mm -hmm. So resolve the issue uh, as you choose forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so tonight, along with that, we're going to give you these last three things mm -hmm. as we start bringing hearts together. And particularly if you are a couple, yes. and this is very important, so listen to me very well. Number four, this is number four. This is, these are all of our new ones for tonight. Mm -hmm. Number four is that improve your work talk. Mm, that's good. Let me say it one more time. It's on the screen. Improve your work talk. Now, I know it's traditional that we say, you know, women, they have the responsibility of cooking and cleaning in the house. But under the circumstances that we are in right now, and mm -hmm. things have changed, we're not back in the 40s or 50s <laughs> anymore, and that it's not so where all of those obligations have to be placed upon yeah. uh, your spouse. Yeah. That now, as we talk about improving our work talk, now if both of us are working in the home, now hear me real good, brothers, don't, don't turn off right now, listen to me real good, is that now we need to talk about how to divide the cooking, how to divide the cleaning, how to divide housework, and even now, because of the pandemic, well, how are we going to divide, divide homeschooling? We got to talk about that work talk. We got to talk about shopping and we got to talk about work schedules. If I'm working from home or working from the office, we got to talk. We got to have work talk. We got to improve that because, again, we have to adjust to what may be now our new yes. normal and be able to function in this new normal. Mm -hmm. Because I still believe that you can still thrive in your relationships. You can still thrive in your home right now if you practice the principles that we're sharing with you tonight based mm -hmm. upon that kind of love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. We call it agape love, the God kind of love. And you need to make sure that that's a part of the fabric of your planning and your, the things that you are doing to instill her harmony in your home. You want to improve your walk, your work talk. Who's going to do the dishes today? Who's going to prepare the meal today? Well, you say, well, I don't cook, so I don't have anything to do with that. Well, maybe you don't cook, but you can stop by the, the chicken place. Right. You can stop by the pizza place and call home and say, I'm bringing dinner home. <laughs> or, hey, I'm going out to get dinner and I'll bring it home uh, so that we all can eat. So that there is no more extra, extra undue pressure on one spouse or the other that we have or uh, we improve our work right. talk so then that we can divide the work up under our, what I'm going to say tonight, our new normal. Amen. The number five is? Number five is increase your heart talk. Communication in uh, any relationship, but in the marriage, communication gives life to the marriage. Yes. Communication gives life to the marriage. So how do we do heart talk? It is primarily by caring about the other person's feelings and taking turns as a speaker and a listener. Yeah. Caring about the other person's feelings and taking turns as a speaker and a listener. Yes. That's communication. So communication, again, it gives life to the marriage. And so I have here where... Um, Dr. S um, Gary Smiley suggests that somewhere along the line, they brought into the idea, bought into the idea that real uh, communication occurs when they understand each other's words. That's unfortunate because as the concept of heart talk demonstrates very clearly, words are yeah. actually just the beginning. Yes. They're just the beginning. And so going past just the words, but being a listener and a being a talker and then being a listener or a speaker yes. and then a listener, you can go down deeper than the words that are initially said said um, upon the first time you start talking. So yes. as you dig deeper and as you're listening, you're able again to go deeper in the conversation and that's where 
heart talk really takes place because I value what yes. you have to say. I'm not shrugging it off. I'm valuing what you have to say. I'm not listening to come back with the response, but I'm listening to hear your heart. And then in return, you're listening to hear my heart. So communication, it gives life to our ma marriage. And then emotionally, being emotionally connected is a branch of that. So as we communicate, we become emotionally connected. And so to be con emotional, emotionally connected is to express needs, thoughts, and feelings. Yeah. Needs, thoughts, and feelings. Yeah. So we share as we are emotionally connected. We share our joys and yeah. our sorrows. Yeah. We share our joys and our sorrows. And the last thing about heart talk and being uh, connected in the heart and speaking together is that we have verbal and nonverbal communication. Right. So communication isn't just about speaking words, but it's also what you're saying in the silence. Yes. So if I'm listening uh, to my companion or to some of my friends that's speaking yeah. to me, if I'm rolling my eyes or I'm turned the other way, then my nonverbal communication is expressing that I'm not interested in what you're saying. And right. so we have to um, take an account as we're looking to build this heart connection is that we um, recognize that there is verbal and nonverbal communication and that is important and that we were created to be known intimately. We were created to be known intimately. And so that's just a few things about heart talk. And then let me just add to that too, is that when we talk about increasing our heart talk, we are communicating uh, with one another. These conversations don't happen by accident. You have to stop what you're doing and be intentional. Be, uh, you have planned this out that we're going to stop what we're doing not talking and I'm on the cell phone while she's talking or whatever the case is. Because these, again, these conversations don't happen by accident. They have to be on purpose that you have those conversations. And so tonight, we want to just recommend that you spend about 10 minutes every day uh, talking about meaningful things and getting to know each other's inner life. Spend some time talking to each other because, again, you'd be surprised that if you don't keep up talking about each other's inner life and what's going on in each other's life, all you have of what you all had in the past, right. and we don't have what we are in our current present state. So you want to make sure. Spend about 10 minutes a day mm -hmm. speaking mm -hmm. to each other mm -hmm. about where you, what, what's going on with you, right. what's happening in your world, mm -hmm. and listening and, and giving feedback and talking and communicating. And then I promise you that will increase your heart talk. And so far, our last thing tonight, and I hope this is helping you, mm -hmm. our last thing tonight is we talk about bringing your hearts together and because we've been in this pandemic and because we've been on quarantine and because we haven't been able to go to a lot of places that we normally uh, frequent and been able to enjoy because they've been closed right. down. Right. Here's the sixth thing. Find new ways to play together. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Find new ways to play together. That means that we got to develop other ways to play and have fun together. Mm -hmm. And so if going to the bowling alley or going to the movie theater or going to plays or going to the symphony was something that you enjoy doing and now you discover that we cannot do that, well, there's no need for us to sit at home on the couch looking at each other or just overdosing on <laughs> television or Netflix or whatever it is. We have to be, we have to find new ways to play together. Let's find some new creative things that we can do together that we enjoy right. together mm -hmm. and then find some things that you enjoy by yourself. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah, uh, so there, you know, there are a few things. Um, board games and some have a dress up night. Um, work together on a puzzle yes. challenge. Yes. Um, have a spa night. Yes. Uh, the other thing is, for example, if I really enjoy cooking, and my spouse, he doesn't know how to cook. This is just an example. It could be anything. I'm just using cooking. Yes. And uh, he doesn't really, may, he may not know how to cook. Well, let me just think about a dish that I could teach him. 
Correct. How to cook. So come on in the kitchen. Let me have a cooking lesson. You're going to be the pupil. I'm going to yes. teach you how yes. to cook. It can be anything uh, for whatever his passion is. Learning something that would be his passion and that will that makes him happy. And let me let me learn a little something about now. I still may not like it after you teach me, but at but least that's right. we've come together and we've shared an experience that, you know, in this time we probably wouldn't have, we wouldn't have never have experienced that had it not been for this time that we have together. So taking um time to think outside of the box. Thinking right. outside of the box. And That's like right. uh, Pastor just said, it doesn't have to just be a Netflix binge. It That's doesn't right. have to be one thing that we normally do. We can we can make up something. We can go in the backyard and we can pull a table out there and two chairs That's and right. create an ambiance and have dinner outside. That's you right. know, we can That's we right. can make up um questions about for each other and pull it out the fishbowl. There's That's so right. many things that we can do and we are living in a great time because we have the endless resource and the World Wide Web in front of us and we can Google things. Yeah. If we can't come up with any creative things on our own, we can Google things and that helps us to remain connected. It can help us overcome even the stresses that may develop by us being all the time at home or being in this lockdown in a sense in this situation where we're sheltered in place, I should say. Yeah, yeah. And then two, three things right here. If you are a husband and wife and you're trying to find new ways to have fun together, now watch this. Now, if you've been so busy all of the time and you come home and you both of you all are always so tired, well, maybe now you have opportunity that you can you know, add some intimacy to your relationship mm -hmm. now, that now you can slow things down right. enough to dim the lights perhaps, put on some nice music, and enjoy each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in, that, in that relationship, if you have, our, you have a family, you have children now, and you can't take them to Disneyland, you can't take them to see the point, where now you can find, you know, for, for some of us who may have grown up old school, will take out some of those old type games yeah. and now share those with our children now. Yeah. Get some jump ropes and learn how to do the double dutch. Get yeah. some chalk and write on the board and learn how to do, see, what is it, hopscotch? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> buy you some jacks and a ball. Come on now, or get, go buy you a football dead and, or basketball and put up a rim in your own driveway and have some activity. Yeah. Go buy some bikes, take your bikes to some trails, have family outing, and you all go bike riding. Take you some snacks, some drinks with you so that you can take breaks laugh and talk as you go bike riding and uh, and you can enjoy yeah. you can enjoy that or if you are a single person now and maybe you don't have anybody to hang out with and uh, and you've been used to going and get your own nails done and get your hair done and those type of things like that you know what you can youtube some things yeah. right yeah and also i was gonna say um you can also do virtual um vacations Yes. There are virtual vacations that you can do right from the home. You can yes. sit there and say, well, I, we would like to go to Paris. So yes. we can do a virtual um, trip online. We can Google it and we can see um, France or we can yes. see Paris right from the comfort of our own home. Yes. Yes. So those yes. are some things that we can do. So instead of saying, oh, my goodness. There, what can we do or what should we do or what interesting things can we find? There are wealth of things that we can do as we take, as we slow down and take time to be creative, think outside of the box, um, and then even use the internet to uh, find out things yes. that we could do in the comfort of our homes and even outside. I mean, I know even with our children, there are many things that we can do. We can take them outside and we can say, okay, I'm gonna see how many things you can find that start with the letter B if you have very young children. Okay. okay, you can, so there are creative things we can do and we can learn from one another because we'll be surprised as we do those things, the type of uh, conversations that will arise out of just kind of doing those things at home. Yeah, and so we want to make sure we find new ways to play together. And so that that way, I believe that God doesn't want, because we are in a pandemic, for our families, right. for our relationships to disintegrate, to separate, to divide. 
Now, there are some that you probably thank God that this has been a good season for you to rebuild and recalibrate yourself and reevaluate some of your relationships. And some of them perhaps do need to be resolved. But those that are close to you, husband and wives, and some of you ought to have BFFs and between you and your children or whatever the case, those close ones, you want to make sure that you have some opportunity to build those things, to bring those hearts back together again so that we don't have to go through this time mm -hmm. feeling alone, feeling uh, like we are uh, uh, in a place of complete confusion uh, because mm -hmm. we're able to draw strength from each other yeah. because we understand we are all in this thing together. And then we want to make sure that love is motivating us, love is driving us to keep things together, mm -hmm. to keep things in order, and to keep things intact so that our relationships can be fruitful, and that they can multiply, and they can be everything God wants it to be. As we put God at the head of everything mm -hmm. in our lives, even in our relationships, and seek out those things that will build those relationships so that the quality of your life, both emotionally mm -hmm. uh, and in the natural sense, will be great for you. And so I hope tonight, the First Lady and I, I hope we've shared something tonight that will have encouraged you, that have blessed you tonight, so that you can learn how to bring those hearts together. It is our prayer that you have peace in your home, yeah. peace in your life, peace between you and your children, you and your friends, you and your spouse, that God will intervene, that there will be a divine intervention, and so that we can step out of the way, in, in a sense, so that, so that God's peace can take over in our homes and in our families and in our relationships, so that we're not isolated, so that we're not mm -hmm. stuck in a corner by ourselves, so that you're not going through this, that, and the other alone by yourself, that you have other people around you, other people that you can call on, those that you can call to help pray you through, to touch and agree with you in prayer, so that your life can be fruitful in every area. And so I pray tonight that something has been said that will be a blessing of encouragement to you. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank First Lady for sharing tonight. I just appreciate you so much uh, for this time of sharing tonight. And I want to just ask you tonight, for those that will, if you would take an opportunity to sow in this ministry, I'm asking all the free life, if you would, you know the different ways that we have to give, and I want to share those with you tonight. And then simply, again, you can go to our cash app. That's that dollar sign, Free Life Temple. And you can go there and you can sow your seed. Or simply, you can just go to our webpage at www.freelifetemple.com and uh, go to the donate button and you can sow your seed uh, there or the other two ways you can do it. You can do GiveLify at www.freelifetemple. Um, actually, giving. I'm sorry, GiveLify. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can do GiveLify at Free Life Temple Christian Center. Uh -huh. And you can, you can give, your, give your money that way, GiveLify. It's on the screen. We thank God for the screen. The next yeah. way you can give <laughs> is old school, traditional way. And you can mail your gift in to 507 North Perry in the beautiful city of Pontiac, Michigan, 48342. Yep. That's 507 North Perry in the beautiful city of Pontiac, Michigan, 48342. And so it's okay. <laughs> Me and her, we laugh and play all the time. So don't, don't worry about us. We good. <laughs> So tonight, if you would, yeah. take an opportunity right now and sow in any one of those ways, and we'll certainly appreciate it. Yeah. It helps us to continue to do the ministry that we do here at Free Life. Amen. Now, with that being Amen. said, I want to remind you all this Sunday, for those of you who are coming to church for our Park and Praise, you know, we'll be outside at 10 a.m. Yeah. We will be having communion this Sunday. We will be serving communion this Sunday. And so for those of you who will be here at the church, we will have communion prepared for you. Uh, so we're asking you to come be prepared as we take of the Lord's Supper this Sunday at 10 a.m. And for those of you who will not be attending, but you still want to be a part of the service because you may be viewing it at home, I want you to make sure you get you some bread, get you some juice. And when we do communion here, you can do it at home with us as we go through it all together. So this Sunday at 10 a.m., we want you to be prepared for our communion service this Sunday at 10 a.m. But I'm really looking forward to everybody showing up this Sunday morning, 
drive your car in, you can stay in your car if you like, or get out with your lawn chair stand, whatever you like. Make sure you get you some cold water, whatever you like. Make sure you can come and be comfortable. We're going to have a great time in the Lord this Sunday morning. Amen. So we're looking forward to you being with us this Sunday morning, and it's going to be a great time. So for First Lady and myself, we appreciate you. We love you, and we're looking forward to seeing you very, very soon. We love you, Free Life. We love you to share it. God bless everybody. Have a good night. Peace. <laughs>